September 24th, 2018. It's 2 a.m. on a Monday. No one expects anything to happen this late, right? The only thing that could possibly happen is maybe you get woken up because the coyotes are howling. Maybe teenagers are out doing stupid things, but nothing to do with you, right? You sound asleep, off in a dreamland, but for me, not that night. My father was home and awake. Since he works the night shift at his job, he had to keep his schedule going, as he can't be falling asleep mid-job. So he's sitting out there, watching TV quietly while my mother, sister, and I are all asleep in the back. It's a miracle that he was still awake, because what I remember is the house being completely dark and I'm just laying in bed, then I suddenly have my glasses on and is standing in the kitchen wondering what's going on. My mother was already standing there and my sister was coming out of her room. I don't remember getting out of bed. I was asleep, then in the kitchen. It's like I teleported. It could have been the adrenaline, but I don't know what it was. I was just suddenly awake with my glasses on. I didn't realize what was going on at first, so when I was handed the f house phone, I had no idea what to do with it, so I handed it to my mother as she ran out the door. I was then told to go grab my cat and run out of the house. I got outside to the front yard to see smoke rising from the outside garage door and glowing coming from underneath it. I was starting to understand what was going on. Something caught fire in the garage and were not able to put it out. My cat isn't skittish, but she's adventurous, and before I could put her in the car, she jumped out of my hands and ran into the backyard. We'll get back to her later. By this time, my mother had already pulled the car out of the driveway, and was doing the same with the truck. By the time I fully realized that the house was on fire, I froze, and I couldn't bring myself to run after my cat. Since the fence back there was never good, I knew she had already jumped out. My mom was on the phone with 911 almost this whole time, and they had dispatched someone to come help us. My sister came out of the house, followed by my father and our dog Stormy. My sister realized what was going on and called to my dad, What about the cats? We have three cats and a dog. Jasper, Tony, Tinkerbell, my cat, and Stormy the dog. My father rushed back into the house and tried to grab the cats. By this time, the house was already full of smoke and it was hard for him to breathe. Being the dumb cats they are, they ran from him. Tony ran into the garage and saw the flame for himself, then came back out, and my father grabbed him, ran out, and handed him to my sister. My dad then ran back in and grabbed Jasper, who also ran from him into the garage, saw the flame, and came back out. My dad grabbed Jasper and ran out of the smoky house, handing Jasper to me. By now, my mom had parked both vehicles, and my sister and I ran and put the two cats and the dog into the car, then my sister and I were told to get into the car and wait. It was about five minutes before the fire department, an ambulance, and the cops showed up and started putting things out. They ran into the house and opened the garage door, then opened the outside garage door and put out the fire. The garage was almost completely destroyed at this point, and the dryer was going and also caught on fire. We stored a lot of things in the garage. It was a mess and we were working on cleaning it up finally. The water heater plug caught on fire and lit a pile of clothes on fire too, which in turn lit the dryer on fire and was burning everything in the garage. Plastic tubs were melted, the entire top shelf on the right was completely gone and melted, and it was slowly working its way down when the firemen showed up. Almost four hours went by, and in that time we were all checked out by the ambulance, questioned by the cops, and the fire was put out before we were given the all clear. After that, we went inside, grabbed everything we needed, called my grandma, and we went to my grandma's house and slept. After we woke up, I told my friends what had happened through text, and we all ate and explained what happened. Then came probably the hardest two weeks of my life. After a couple of days, we went back to the house, got everything that was big and important, including all my recording equipment, and left. Then after that, we went back on Friday and cleaned a little bit. My cat had been gone for five days at this point. 
but we were bagging up clothes that could be kept, and we all sat down to take a break when my cat came and jumped through the window and walked through just like normal. We managed to get her and put her in the cage that we brought, just in case she came back, and we called it a night. After that, we had to clean out the entire house and throw away everything that was soft plastic or furniture. We have the most gracious friends because for about two days they came and helped move things, clear out the garage of all the burnt stuff, and throw it all away since we had one of those gigantic trash bins come. Eventually we got everything that was keepable in a U-Haul and we left that house for good. Now it's been two months and five days since then. And in that time we've gotten a camper to live in until we put a house on the property and we are finally getting back into a normal routine. I have all of my computer and recording equipment set up, and I am no longer in a loud place, so I can record again. When you have a house fire, you think that it's only the fire that's gonna happen, and then you're done. But it's the smoke damage that destroys everything in the house. The fire is somewhat controlled in a small area, but the smoke gets everywhere through the vents, and contaminates everything. I never thought it would be this bad if we had a house fire. But now we're all safe, the cat came back, and we are getting a place to live. Thank you for watching. This is why I've been gone for so long.